guys, so today I thought I would share with you some of my favorite facial oils that I've been using in my regime lately. I wanted to do some skincare videos, but a lot of these are involved in my skincare routine and I thought it would be a good kind of pre-video to film just so you guys could be acclimated with the oils and I don't spend a lot of time in those skincare videos talking about the oils and taking away from the rest of the products. So I think in the beginning when oils first started hitting the market, everyone was really skeptical, especially those with oily skin and the whole concept of like, if my skin is oily, why would I put more oil on my skin? It just doesn't make sense. As time went on and as people started to actually try them and use them, myself included, I became a big, big fan of them. I've noticed results, I've noticed them helping my skin to look better, more radiant, and now it's the point where I don't have a day where I don't use at least one of the oils that I'm going to show you. They just serve so many different purposes, You there's so many different uses for them, and the benefits of them are astounding. So the first one I'll start to talk about is one that if you're with my channel for a long time is no stranger to me or my channel, and it's Josie Marin's 100% Pure Argan Oil. I have been a fan of this, I feel like ever since it came out. I think I started using it when I saw her on QVC years ago and I just haven't looked back. For me, it's my go-to nighttime moisturizer when my skin is feeling super dehydrated, especially this winter or fall time of year where I just feel like no matter how much face creams and how great my skincare routine is, it just can't, it just doesn't feel moisturized. This is where this comes in. I have never experienced any kind of breakouts, adverse reaction, clogged pores or anything like that. It's super gentle. She has since released a light version of it, which I have tried and I'm not a big fan of as much as this one. I got the light to try to see if I could use it in the morning because with the Argon Oil, I do find it to be more of a heavier based oil that you wouldn't want to apply in the morning and then apply your makeup right after. It takes a little while for it to absorb on your skin, which is why I really love using it at night because you have the whole time that you're sleeping for it to really do its job. But Definitely a go-to good nighttime moisturizer. It's gentle, there's really no fragrance to it. I would put this in the category of just a moisturizing oil. Sticking with this same kind of concept, I've recently been using the Cold Press Moringa Oil, which I've never really heard of up until recently when this brand decided to send me a whole bunch of their products. And the only complaint that I have with this is the packaging. It's just kind of inconvenient. There's no stopper or dropper, you just kind of pour it out and it's can be messy sometimes. But I use this the same way that I use the Argon Oil as my nighttime moisturizer. With this and the Argon Oil, I do find them to be great moisturizers on their own. A lot of times though, if I feel like my skin is just, I use a, I use a moisturizer and it's just not enough, I'll layer either of these oils to just really boost up the moisturization. But again, no adverse reactions. It's pure, it has some fatty acids in it, and it really helps to diminish your lines, to even out your skin tone, and just really hydrate your skin. Good for anti-aging, really, really good oil. Maybe I should have started with this one. This is coconut oil, and coconut oil is such a trendy, buzzed about product. I feel like it's it's just, I don't know, everyone knows about coconut oil. I use it to cook, mostly fish. I use it to bake. I have the spray. When I'm baking, I always use the coconut oil spray. And up until about three years ago, I was just using it in the kitchen. But ever since I've discovered and read and researched all the benefits of this for your body externally, I've kind of switched over. So coconut oil is fantastic for so many different things. I could probably spend a whole video on coconut oil. But I'll just give you the kind of cliff note version of what I use it for. As you can see, I just have it under my bathroom sink. And it's the same coconut oil I get at the grocery store. The I always get the organic cold press, 100% pure. I just scoop it into this little container and I have it under my, under my sink. So there's a couple things that I love this for. Number one, taking off my makeup. It's phenomenal at doing that. I've also used it as a hair scalp treatment when I was suffering from my postpartum hair loss. This was very helpful in just helping to nourish and hydrate my, my scalp and I won't say that it stopped my hair from falling out but it helped to really hydrate my scalp and take good care of it so that when the hair started growing back it was healthy hair. I also use it as a cuticle oil. Any dry spots, my elbows, my knees that I feel like I just can't get you know, I can't get them to not be cracked and dried. This is great for that. I also use this sometimes to coat my eyelashes or my eyebrows if I just want 
like a good, it's a really, it's a good nourishing oil. So if you just, if you, like for a while I was feeling like my eyelashes were a little bit brittle, I would use it for that. I'll put it on as a balm, like a, like a chapstick before I go to bed. There's just so many good uses, but probably my favorite is for removing my makeup because it gets everything off and at the same time it's super, super moisturizing and it feels like you're putting a treatment on as you're taking your makeup off. Then there is castor oil, and castor oil is probably the most known for helping with hair growth and hair loss. I never really tried it when I was going through my postpartum, but what I have been using it for these days is for my eyelashes and my eyebrows, and I just have this little dual-ended brush from IT Cosmetics and I'll dip it in on the spoolie side and coat my eyelashes and I'll dip it on the angled side and do my eyebrows. I use it on my eyebrows in any sparse areas, so mostly in the front of my eyebrows I do have some sparse areas where I don't know if they've fallen out or they're just not growing. A very thick oil. I wasn't expecting it when I first got it and I was quite surprised, but nonetheless you don't need a lot of it. I kind of like dip my brush in, wipe it off really well, and then just coat my eyelashes and it just really helps the same way that the coconut oil does to really nourish your lashes and lashes and your hair and just give it an all around like boost. You also can use this for on your scalp. That's when I really love the coconut oil because it is so thick and I feel like it would take a long long time for it to get shampooed out of your hair. But if you are suffering from you know lashes falling out or being brittle or you feel like they're really dry, your eyebrows are lacking, I would definitely pick this up. I got this at Walgreens. It's just 100% pure uh, castor oil and I know a lot of people use this when they are trying to bring on labor. I don't know if it's effective in that way. I never tried it but for hair growth and stimulation I think it's really good. So Divine Oil was recently in my October Favorites video and one other before then. This is from L'Occitane and it is a pricey oil but it's like a little bottle of gold. A really great anti-aging oil. It always makes my skin feel so good. I apply this as a nighttime moisturizer. I'll put it on on top of a face cream at night if I feel like it's not enough or sometimes if I'm going to bed later than when I did my whole nighttime routine, I'll just kind of put this on to boost it up. My skin feels heavenly in the morning. Like it feels like silk and it definitely feels like a silky oil. It's hard to explain. These other oils, the Argon, the Moringa, they feel like a straight up oil. This feels like silk when you're putting it on. It's not, it's very runny. It's not thick. This has a really nice fragrance to it, but overall it's said to just even out your skin tone and just make your skin glow and just be super hydrated. And it, for me, it does exactly that. When I wake up in the morning after I've used this, I notice a huge difference in just like the appearance of my skin, just very glowy and fresh and clean and healthy. So for spot treatments, I've tried a lot of products and recently a good friend of mine started making her own at home natural remedies and products and she made for me a little tea tree roll on spot treatment and I think the base is uh, jojoba oil I think and then she added her tea tree oil and it's a simple little thing smells amazing and when I feel a little bump or a zit coming on this is like my savior I roll it on right away and sometimes even when it's full blown like happening on my face. I will still use this. A lot of times the next morning I'm like, whoa, that was quick. I wouldn't say that it zaps your pimples and your zits, but it calms them. It, it stops them from being irritated. It does help to reduce the redness and it definitely helps to dry out. I'll put Lily's email below. A really good friend of mine and stay-at-home mom and the stuff's really great. She does all kinds of things. She has uh, natural deodorants, she has sunscreens, bug sprays, like all that stuff. And the last oil I wanted to talk to you about is probably the one that I've been enjoying the most and seen really good results from, different from any of the ones I've just talked about, and it is rosehip oil. This is by Walla Vive Organics. It's organic rosehip oil, 100% pure, unrefined, and cold pressed. I got this on Amazon, I believe. I'll have links to everything in my description box. Comes with a little stopper. It's a red or orange oil. Looks like that. And I was introduced to this from one of my favorite blogs and good friends, Erin of the Grass Skirt. She blogged about this and I was like, I've never heard of rosehip oil. And when I got it, I was expecting it to be pink and smell like roses and it just doesn't at all. Basically, it's been claimed to be the all natural alternative to Botox. Because it's made up of so many fatty acids, it fills in those lines, wrinkles, crow's feet, and it's a more natural alternative. I'm not going to say it's dramatic and you can save yourself getting Botox treatments, but 
couple things about this. It's an extremely dry oil, and when it's when I say that, it's kind of I feel like it's a little oxymoron. What I mean by that is it absorbs into your skin almost immediately and it almost gives your skin a matte finish. Whereas the other oils I've talked about look shiny on your face. This absorbs, it sinks into your skin. I use this day and night. I use this as soon as I'm done cleansing my face at night, as soon as I get out of the shower in the morning and I've cleansed my face. It's my first step before my serums, before my nighttime creams, before my any other oils that, I'm, that I talked about here. It sinks in very quickly and it just, it doesn't look like you have anything on your skin. I concentrate it the most on my marionette lines, my forehead, my crow's feet, like around there. And I really just, I do like three or four drops in the morning because I am going to put makeup on afterwards. And at night I do four or five drops just for a little bit of extra. It's really good for hydration. It's said to diminish fine lines and wrinkles. And the other thing I really love it for is that it is supposed to be helpful in fading acne scars and hyperpigmentation. And I have two spots on my face where I am, I am avidly trying to fade those scars. And I have noticed quite a difference with this guy. I've been using this religiously since I've gotten it probably two months ago. It's amazing stuff. I have definitely noticed my forehead lines relax a little bit. I wouldn't say that they're gone, I don't notice them anymore, but I've definitely noticed they're not as prominent. In the past, like the littlest little thing, I would, you know, move it on my face, I would see them. Now it's like I find that I really have to like, you know, make them come, come out. So I'm going to chalk it up to this. But either way, it's a really good hydrating oil. If you're looking for extra hydration in the morning and you don't want to use an oil that won't settle in and it's gonna make you know make your makeup slip all over your face this is amazing for that and I'm just a big big fan this is definitely an oil I'll never be without all of these oils I really could pair them very easily together like rosehip oil day and night divine oil is a good nighttime tea tree oil I'll layer when I have spots happening coconut oil to take off my makeup if I really castor oil to put on my lashes and eyebrows I mean that is five oils in one night or one day that I use on my face and I have not noticed anything fighting each other no adverse effects and just the benefits of using all of these is it's just been amazing and it feels good because they're they're natural they're organic they're pure you're not putting all these extra steps full of chemicals and not good for you ingredients I I just love them so much and I really think that it has helped my skin dramatically I almost wish that I would have taken like before and after pictures since I really started getting into these but I've noticed a difference, especially with my, my scars. Even when I get breakouts now, they don't last on my face as long. They fade a lot quicker than I feel like in the past. They would just be like pretty much a scar on my face, a mark on my face. I remember I had one here, a zit. It's completely gone. And I don't know if it's this or that or just a culmination of everything that I've been using, but I've definitely noticed a rapid change in fading those scars. And, and yeah, and it's just I haven't had any negative things to say about any of these oils. All good things here. Did want to mention the price points of things. The most expensive one that I talked about is the Divine Oil, but everything else, Argon Oil is probably second in line. Everything else is probably like the $20, $30 range. Coconut oil you can find in Trader Joe's or at your grocery store. Castor oil is not expensive. The treatment, like I said, $10. I think the Rosehip oil was about 15 maybe, the Moringa is like 25, so pretty average. And the cool thing with oils too is they last you a really long time because you don't need a lot of the product to actually do the job. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Now that I've kind of introduced you to these, this little family of oils that I use, I can talk about them in my skincare routines and you guys will know what I'm talking about. So thank you for watching this video and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. This what it looks like. It's super small and I'm going to do a whole presentation of me showing you how I use it on my lips so you can hear it, see it, see my reaction because I do it